hey guys welcome back to my channel um all right so you know it's october which means that it is national infant and child loss awareness month um so i was thinking uh, that this would be the perfect time to actually share troy's story with you all um just because one i love to talk about my son and because he's amazing and also it's very important that we talk about our children that we have lost uh, because the only way that we're going to be able to change the narrative of things is by talking about it like the only way we're going to be able to get more support and encouragement and advances in medicine and technology is if we actually talk about what we're going through and keeping silent is not the way so i want to talk to you guys about troy so um <sighs> So Troy uh, is my firstborn. Uh, so we, and when I say we, I mean my husband and I. Um, so I'll probably say we a lot. But so Troy um, is my firstborn son, and we actually lost him at 26 weeks. I was 26 weeks pregnant. Um, <sighs> yeah, we. He was due in May, but we lost him um, in February. Um, up until that point, it was a textbook pregnancy, uh, so there was nothing that was amiss. Everything was moving just fine. We didn't have any concern. I actually didn't have like any nausea, you know, when I was pregnant with him. All I really wanted to do was just eat like a bunch of onions, which I, I would eat so much that I would get like a headache. But I digress. I just had I had a textbook pregnancy, and everything was wonderful. And so uh, I remember during this time that I actually uh, was working quite a bit. I, I've always been kind of a workaholic. Uh, it's just been like my nature. Um, always just thinking that I had to work constantly because I didn't seem to know what to do with myself if I wasn't working. So I was working a lot. Um, and I remember uh, my full-time job was picking up quite a bit so we actually I, I wasn't getting breaks to be honest uh, yeah I, I wasn't getting any breaks uh, that you know you typically need because the amount of work that we had was just so so much so I wasn't getting a lunch I wasn't really having time to drink water and uh, I remember just at that time I was, I was just so angry and I didn't understand why and then like I thought to myself maybe it's because you're so stressed out maybe it's because you're tired because you know like you're pregnant like that's like normal um but I think my body was trying to tell me something that something wasn't right I um was working so much and on my feet so much that I couldn't remember if I had felt him kick that day um because I was just so so on the go and um, I remember we had a, I had an appointment uh, to uh, get the to test for the gestational diabetes, and I remember sitting there and taking a drink uh, that everybody says is disgusting, uh, which it it was actually kind of bad, but and I didn't feel anything, and so I was kind of I was, kinda, I was honestly kind of worried um, even before that. I was like, I don't feel like I'm feeling can move as much as I usually do uh but then I I chalked it up to like you know being a new mom and just being you know a warrior just being really nervous and so I just thought like maybe it was just it was me um so I basically like convinced myself that everything was okay um yeah I, I basically did that and so I remember laying there and the doctor's trying to find the heartbeat and she can't find it. And I could tell she didn't want to alarm me, but she's like, oh, we're, we're going to get an ultrasound. But of course, like, when you do that, like, you're already, like, thinking the worst. So I remember um, getting the ultrasound done and just seeing that um, my son wasn't moving. And I remember... And I'm not, I'm not gonna cry. I remember just laying there, um, just alone, because I didn't, I didn't have my husband with me. Um, 
because again, like the the pregnancy was very routine. It was very normal. So I took him in for the fun stuff. You know, when we were gonna have ultrasounds is when I would invite my husband to come with me um, so that he could see, you know, our son too. I didn't see the point in him going to every single appointment, um, you know, because I didn't think that there was really a need. And yeah, so I just remember being so alone and just, just being so alone. Um, and having to go out, I went out the back door and I, when I opened up, you know, the door uh, out of the ultrasound room, um, there was a pregnant lady with her, you know, her partner, and, you know, they were super excited. And it was just like, of course, you're gonna see pregnant people. You're uh, at the OBGYN, of course. But it was just like, I just, got the news that I lost my son and there's a pregnant woman right there waiting for her ultrasound because I probably, you know, took her spot because, you know, we, we needed to see. Uh, yeah, I remember just going out the back way so that I wouldn't have to pass by all the people and it was, it was so hard. It, it was, yeah, I, I cried in the car. I was only five minutes away from the apartment, but I, I could not bring myself to drive just yet. Um, and then having to go home and then share the news. <sighs> yeah. Um, so I didn't have to make a decision that night. I could, you know, wait um, and then contact them when I felt a little bit better, um, but ultimately I just, I couldn't stand to look at myself, to be honest. I, I really could not stand to look at my body uh, because at the time I felt like I failed. I felt like my body had failed me. I had felt like it had failed my son and I just could not look at my stomach and know that my son was not living. So um, we, um, we went to the hospital, we had to get induced. And I remember for like the longest time, I like didn't want to take any pain medicine. I didn't want an epidural uh, because I felt like I deserved the pain. I felt like I, it was the least I could do. Um, that Like that's honestly how I felt. It was the least that I could do uh, because I failed my son. And I kind of went into like this state of like detaching myself. I didn't really, I thought it would make it hurt less if I just kind of detached, uh, which it didn't, but it, it didn't. Um, so luckily we did get pictures, um, you know, of me holding him. And so luckily we do have pictures of, you know, our son, um, because at first I didn't want to have any pictures. Uh, I just kind of wanted to just be away like I wanted to escape in my mind. Um, but yeah, so we ended up having to stay in the hospital for like another night uh, because I ended up running a fever, uh, which honestly I'm grateful for uh, because it gave me more time with him because, you know, at first I just, I was trying to detach. And so I'm grateful that we had more time. Um, but uh, the hospital was, uh, they were going through like renovations. <laughs> and um, I remember we had to uh, leave, we had to leave Troy um, on somebody's desk because they were renovating. So yeah, as you can imagine having to, not only leaving your son, like you're not supposed to leave the hospital without your kid. But I had to leave up on somebody's desk. And yeah, that that was really tough. And I, I basically, and I mean, I it, it was just tough. Um, and like the last like couple of months after that, uh, yeah.
I just, I remember being really angry. Uh, I was really angry with God because I didn't understand at the time why uh, the son that was so loved um, was taken from us. I just didn't understand it uh, because like I would see the news articles and you know that everybody does and I'm like why was my son taken and there's children out here being you know abused and I just I was angry I was really angry um but yeah so it it took me actually voicing that out loud it took me journaling um to get through it um, it's one of those things where you don't really necessarily stop grieving, but you do learn how to manage it. Um, you do learn how to manage it and, and it's cliche to say, but yes, time does help in that aspect. Um, and I, I think also just telling God that I was angry and voicing that it led to me, um, talking to him more it led to me actually like opening up my bible and reading and developing that relationship i i don't think that i could have done it without god i don't think i could have done it without my husband um, he was so strong uh for us and it was it was really rough um and you know I think about Troy every day. I think about him every every day, um, and we we try to include him in things, even though he's not physically here with us. Like um, we write his name down on the board. Um, you know, when I pray, I say my sons. I don't just refer to uh, Silas. Uh, so yeah. I, I hope that um, this story like helps you um, in some kind of way. I hope that I, what you get from this is that um, there is some beauty later on um, in the midst of it. It does hurt um, and you don't ever forget your child, uh, but it's very important that we talk about them. It's very important that we share their stories because they matter um, and, you know, and we matter and so I just hope that this helps you today and I would love it if you would share you know your story with me down in the comments or yeah just I would just love that because I, I want to know about your kids too and I want to help honor them as well so thanks guys